Okay, so here we have another example of energy analysis over a control volume. So we're told that we have R134A and it's gonna enter it inside of an insulated compressor. So I have a compressor here and these dotted lines just represent some insulation. So basically what that means is that your heat transfer is equal to zero, it's negligible. And we're told that it's operating at a steady state and it's a saturated vapor at first, so X1 equals one, it's your quality. Your temperature at the inlet is negative 20 degrees Celsius. And then we're told the mass flow rate is 1.2 kilograms per second. The potential and kinetic, kin sorry, potential and kinetic energy can both be ignored. And then at the exit, we have a pressure of seven bar and a temperature of 70 degrees Celsius. We're asked to find a couple of things here. So we're looking for the volumetric flow rate at the inlet and the volumetric flow rate at the exit, both in cubic meters per second. And then we're also looking for the power input of this compressor. And that would be in kilowatts. Okay, so I'm thinking we're going to start off with the formula of mass flow rate. M dot is equal to velocity times area divided by specific volume. And the reason I'm going to do that is because this whole unit up top in the numerator can be simplified being equal to the volumetric flow rate divided by the specific volume. So what this means is if we're looking for that volumetric flow rate, we can rearrange. So we'll look for a V1. So volumetric flow rate at the inlet is going to be equal to the mass flow rate times the specific volume. And this seems pretty easy to work with since we do have that uh, mass flow rate right there. So let's go ahead and plug it in. So we have 1.2 kilograms per second. But then we don't have that specific volume, but we are told a couple of things here. So we have the quality and we have the temperature. So we can turn to the saturated tables. Obviously we're a saturated vapor. So we're gonna be in this column right over here. So we're gonna be at saturated vapor and I think it was negative 20 degrees. So we'll go to negative 20, saturated vapor 0 0.1464. So I'll circle that. 0 0.1464, and that's meters cubed per kilogram. Okay, so now when you plug this in and you put in your calculator, you'll have that the volumetric flow rate at the inlet is equal to 0 0.17568. That's going to be meters cubed per second. So that's pretty easy. And now I'll find it at the exit. So V2, volumetric flow rate 2 is equal to m dot and i'm just going to say m dot rather than m dot one or m dot two because obviously we're just working with one inlet and one exit so the mass flow rate has to be equal on either side so m dot times and by the way that should be a one up there and a two down here on the specific volumes you set this equal to 1.2 once again on the mass flow rate and then we have to find that specific volume at the exit so at the exit, we're told seven bar and 70 degrees Celsius. So I'll turn to the saturated table, see what we're working with. So we go down to 70 degrees Celsius and we're told the saturation pressure is 21 bar. We're way below that at seven bar. So we're gonna be in the superheated region. Turn to the superheated table for our 134A. So table A12, go to seven bar, 70 degrees. And we have 0 0.03634, turn back to the problem. And we have 0 0.03634, and that's kilojoules per kilogram, or sorry, uh, meters cubed per kilogram. And when you plug this into your calculator, you'll have that this whole thing equals 0 0.0436, and that's gonna be meters cubed per second. All right, now finally, we just need to find that power that the compressor draws. And this will be pretty easy. I'm thinking we'll just use the energy balance over the compressor. So if we use the energy balance equation, we'll have zero equals uh, the heat transfer minus the power plus the mass flow rate times a few things here. So it'd be the difference in enthalpy. And then to that, you would add the... Uh, kinetic energy and the potential energy, but we're told to neglect them. So actually this would be the whole entire thing here. So we can get rid of that heat transfer equal to zero. It's insulated and you'll have that the power is equal to 
just the mass flow rate times that change in enthalpy. So now pretty much all we have to do is solve for these enthalpies or find them off the property tables. So we'll go ahead and do that. So first thing you're gonna do is turn to table A10 and consequently, because we have negative 20 degrees, saturated vapor, we just go to this column right over here. We have 235.31. So this is gonna be equal to 1.2 kilograms per second times uh, 235.31 kilojoules per kilogram minus uh, the enthalpy at the exit, which was, uh, what was it, 70 degrees Celsius and seven bars, so it would be 307.01. So 307.01 kilojoules per kilogram. Plug this into your calculator and you'll solve negative 86.04 kilowatts makes sense it's a negative number compressors do draw power and there's your answer